In the last lecture, I explained four problems and the problems were based on causal and non-causal systems and I also gave you three homework problems. Now in this lecture, we will again solve four problems and the problems are based on causal and non-causal systems but this time, the problems are only related to integration and differentiation. So let's start with our fifth problem. In the fifth problem, output yt is equal to integration minus infinity to t x tau d tau. The input of the system is xt and the output of the system is yt. But here we have taken x tau d tau. We have taken x tau d tau in order to differentiate between the upper limit of integration and the independent variable of signal xt. You can also have the integration in this form minus infinity to t xt dt. In this case, you can see there is no difference between the upper limit of integration and the independent variable of the input signal. So to differentiate and have a better understanding while performing the integration, we have x tau d tau. When you replace t by tau, when you replace t by tau, there will be no difference in the input signal. Now we will find out if the system is causal or non-causal. And for this, we will use our knowledge of integration. We already know what is integration, what it actually represents. And I explained this in great detail while discussing the graphical integration method. The integration of a signal gives us the area under the curve. For example, for example, let's have a random signal curve like this. And we are integrating from minus infinity to t. And let's say t is equal to 1, t is equal to 1. So we are integrating from minus infinity to 1. And the integration will be equal to area under the curve from minus infinity to 1. So the integration will be equal to the total area. And you can clearly see the integration is depending on the past values of input. You can see these all values are past values of input and it is also depending on the present value of input. When t is equal to 1, the value of signal is the present value of input. So to calculate the integration, we need the past values of input and the present value of input. There is no need of future values of input. So we can say that the given system is causal in nature. The given system is causal in nature. But you cannot generalize this. You cannot say all the systems which are performing the integration are causal in nature. We will see a few more examples in which the system is performing the integration but still it is non-causal. It all depends on the upper limit of integration and the signal itself. So let's move to problem number 6 to understand how a system performing integration can be non-causal. This time output yt is equal to integration from minus infinity to t plus 1 x tau d tau. We already know the concept behind the integration. So you can have the answer following that concept. But I will let you know one simple way to find out if the system is causal or non-causal whenever you have the integration. Simply put tau equal to t plus 1, tau equal to t plus 1 and this will give you x t plus 1. In the same way put minus infinity in place of tau and this will give you x minus infinity. Now analyze the result you have after substituting t plus 1 and minus infinity in place of tau. You can see x t plus 1 is there and when you put t equal to 0 you will have x 1. So t equal to 0 is the present time instant and relative to this 1 is the future time instant. So x1 is the future value of input. So the system is non-causal. And you can also check for x minus infinity. x minus infinity is the past value of input. So output of the system is depending on the future values of input and the past values of input. So the system is non-causal. System is non causal and what is the difference between this relationship and this relationship 
you can see here we have t as the upper limit but here we have t plus 1 as the upper limit now if you change t plus 1 by t minus 1 then you will find the system is causal follow the same steps and you will have the result now let's move to problem number 7 in this output y t is equal to integration minus infinity to t x 3 tau d tau again we will perform the same steps we will put tau equal to t and this will give us x 3t and we will put minus infinity in place of tau and this will give us x minus infinity and we have already seen x minus infinity is the past value of input now we will check what kind of input is x 3t for this i will put t equal to 1 and this will give us x 3 so t equal to 1 is the present time instant and relative to 1 3 is the future time instant therefore x 3 is the future value of input so the system is non-causal system is non-causal now if you compare problem number five problem number six and problem number seven you will find only problem number five is having the system which is causal because here we have x of tau and here we have t in problem number six this t was replaced by t plus one and the input signal remains as it is x tau x tau in the seventh problem t remains same but the signal is now changed it is x3 tau so you have to be careful about the limits of integration and the signal you are integrating depending on these two factors you will have the nature of the system so the integration is not always going to give you the result as causal it may be causal or it may be non-causal you have to check following the process i have shown in problem number six and in problem number seven now let's move to problem number eight the last problem in this lecture and this time output yt is equal to d by dt of xt now this problem is little bit contradictory the solution will not give us the exact nature of the system to understand this we will use the concept of differentiation when you differentiate a signal with respect to the independent variable you will get the slope of that signal with respect to independent variable for example in this case when you differentiate xt with respect to t you will get yt this yt is the slope of signal xt with respect to t so let's take one example and in this example let's make one straight line like this and we already know to define a straight line we need at least two different points for example let's say this is our first point and this is our second point and this one here is the third point so to define this line we need at least two points out of one two and three we need two points we will consider two different cases in case number one we will take point number two and point number one and in case number two we will take point number one and point number three let's say the present time instant t is equal to one and at t equal to one we have this point number one and let's say the second point is at t equal to minus 0 0.5 t equal to minus 0 0.5 and the third point the third point is at t equal to 2 now in case number one to define the straight line and to find the slope of the straight line we will only consider second point and the first point and when we consider the second point it means we are considering the past value of input because t equal to 1 is the present instant of time and with respect to this t equal to minus 0 0.5 will be past instant of time and at this instant of time the value of signal is going to be past value of input so to define a straight line to define a straight line or to find a slope of the straight line until and unless you define a straight line you cannot find a slope and slope is the differentiation of the given signal so to find out the derivative of the signal one time derivative we need the straight line and to have the straight line we need two points in case number one we have taken point number two and point number one this means we need the past 
value of input and the present value of input. This is case number one. In case number two, let's take point number one and point number two. With respect to the present instant of time, which is one, t equal to two will be future instant of time. And the signal defined at this time is the future value of input. So in case number two, we need the present value of input as well as the future value of input. And from the definition of causal and non-causal systems, case number one will give us causal nature of the system because causal systems are those systems in which the output of the system is independent of the future values of input. And here we only need past and present values of input. So the system is having the causal nature. But if you see the case number two, you will see future input is there. So according to case number two, the system is having the non-causal nature. So whenever you have the derivative of the given input signal, you cannot exactly tell about the nature of the system, whether it is causal or whether it is non-causal. And the reason we have seen in detail. So what will you answer when you are required to choose only one option out of causal and non-causal? Your answer should be causal. I will explain why. I have already told you causal systems are real life systems and they are the systems which we can physically realize. They are physically realizable systems. So it is good to choose causal system as the answer because they are practically realizable systems. On the other hand, non-causal systems require the future values of input and it is not possible to predict the accurate values of the future input. Therefore, the causal system should be the answer. However, this question will not be asked in your examinations, but for knowledge, you should know the nature of the system when it is performing the differentiation. Now let's move to the homework problems. There are three homework problems for you. In the first homework problem, yt is equal to integration minus infinity to 2t x tau by 2 d tau. You need to find out the nature of the system, whether it is causal or non-causal. In the second homework problem, output yt is equal to integration minus infinity to t x tau minus 1 d tau minus 1. Again, you need to find out the nature of the system, causal or non-causal. And in the third problem, the last problem, we have integration from minus infinity to 2t x tau d tau. So solve the three problems given here. And once you have your answer, post it in comment section. Now I will end this lecture here. See you in the next one.